Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this RegimTo.com video, we're going to be discussing the RX Vega series of graphics cards. Despite the fact that AMD's Computex uh, conference is over and done with, that's not to say that news on Team Red is over and done with. No, no, no. A source over at PC Games Hardware has revealed some very interesting information. Now, it is, of course, a rumour, so don't take it as, you know, confirmation from AMD themselves, but I wouldn't be surprised. According to this source... We won't be seeing the mainstream GPUs until 2017 or 2018, or, to put it another way, Vega 11 will indeed be hitting uh, very early Q3, at least according to AMD themselves, but for mainstream users, it won't be until, possibly even slipping until Q1 2018. So, for clarification's sake, Vega 10 is what we're referring to when we're talking about the enthusiast market. These are the more expensive graphics cards, you know, the cards which... If you want an NVIDIA example, it would be like the GTX 1080 or the 1080 Ti, cards which are not cheap. They cost an awful lot of money. And in AMD's case, they're probably going to be loaded down with HBM2. Um, an awful lot of compute units, probably the high end is going to be something along the lines of 64, which means 4096 stream processors. Naturally, fairly high robust clocks. And basically, they represent the creme de la creme of AMD's crowning jewels, if you will. The mainstream is probably not going to be so impressive, at least compared to the high end, but it's also going to be more in the realms of affordability for the average user. These cards are probably not going to be aiming at 4K 60fps, which is the claim bolstered by AMD for the Vega 10 graphics cards. Instead, they're probably going to be more along the lines of very high-end 1080p, but more realistically, probably more like, you know, 1440p with high frame rate and good graphics settings at kind of the standard. There are a couple of questions, the most obvious being specifications. Uh, we don't have any information regarding that, and whether HBM2 is going to be segmenting and acting almost like the, the separator between the Vega 10 and Vega 11. It's possible, for example, that Vega 11 is going to have an entirely different memory controller. It makes much more sense than Vega 10 having a different memory controller. Therefore, it's probable, and I'm not saying it's a guarantee, that all Vega 11s are going to be based on, say, GDDR5X or possibly even R6. We're going to have to wait and see on that one, depending upon release schedules and release times and all of that stuff. And also, of course, the sheer amount of bandwidth that these cards require. The second and probably the most obvious question that we have with this is like, well, okay, if that's the case and it is delayed, what does that mean for the rest of the lineup? Because, as we all know, AMD have recently refreshed the uh, Polaris lineup, which of course originated with the uh, 400 series, like the 470s, the 480s. These have since gotten tweaked, and there are a couple of additional differences on the core, but, you know, for the average user, they're probably going to say, well... They're basically the same graphics card architecture, just with slightly more, uh, higher, well, slightly higher clocks, and also a little bit running, a little bit, uh, a little bit cooler, excuse me. But ultimately, we've already had the 500 series, so I guess the question for a lot of people is like, well, what happens to that series? Are they going to be almost phased out? Because if so, let's say that they release. Let's be optimistic on the part of AMD. Let's say they release late November for Vega 11. That's not a very long time for a card to be on the market at all. It's not exactly unheard of, but I think a lot of people would be pissed, especially if you've got the 580 and whatever the Vega 11 entry-level models being kind of at the same pricing. Another possibility is we're going to get like the 580 and then it's going to go to like the 590, the 590X, which would act as the Vega 11s and then RX Vega would be something completely different. Although, if you recall, Raja Khadori has gone on record and said that they just want Radeon RX Vega to be the brand. So it's possible that we're going to have something like Vega 11 1 and Vega 11 2 or something like that. We just don't know. It's kind of up in the air at the moment, and AMD have so many plates spinning. Um, you've got, of course, Threadripper, which is reported to release some point this summer. They are releasing the Vega Frontier Edition, which is going to be about a month's time. And then in a couple of months after that, at SIGGRAPH 2017, we're going to be seeing the launch of the first Vega 10 cards, assuming there's no slippage. 
whether that's going to be in high numbers, as we've discussed previously regarding the quantity of HPM2, clock speeds, that type of jazz. We're just going to have to wait and see. What this essentially means is bad stuff for AMD if you are looking for a mainstream solution. So, for example, the 580 card is just nowhere near as fast as the GTX 1070, and I'm being honest. The 1070, therefore, might find its way into a very interesting niche, and potentially even Volta if, I, if NVIDIA can release Volta at that point, which I'm somewhat skeptical, but... You know, let's, let's assume they don't for this video because let's not have too many different uh, possibilities in one video. So let's assume that Volta doesn't become a reality. Quite frankly, if you're in the budget for, sorry, in the market for a graphics card which is faster than an RX 580, but you don't have the funds for like a high end Vega card, then really the GTX 1070 becomes rather interesting, possibly even a 1080. And I wouldn't be surprised if especially if NVIDIA cannot release Volta by the end of this year, it would not be outside the realms of possibility for NVIDIA to start drastically cutting the cost of the 1070 um, or the 1080 even more. And hell, they could even technically release a 1070 tie if they wanted to. There's nothing stopping them doing that. And it would almost have, I don't know, stuff like, you know, low 2000 CUDA cores. I mean, for example, the regular GTX 1070 has 1920, the 1080 has like 2560, so they could probably go somewhere in the middle, and they could also have like a slightly higher clock speed. They could possibly do that if they wanted to, or they could just lower the price of the 1070 and it would make for at least a bit of a spurt in their sales and possibly help squeeze AMD out of the market in that particular segment. But regarding the very bleeding high-end uh, high cards, then it really is going to be down to the Vega 10s, probably beating Pascal, because let's face it, they've got, it's going to be an architecture which is at least a year older, so I don't think it's going to be a case where Pascal is not going to be, um, you know, winning. I think Pascal is going to probably lose by quite a significant amount in many benchmarks, not all benchmarks, but how Vega st uh, stacks up against Volta is a completely different question at all, uh, entirely, and so we're just going to have to wait and see. Anyway, with all of that said, hopefully you've enjoyed the video, I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.